In this lesson, we'll talk about angles and primarily focus on the vocab, especially when they're formed by parallel lines in a transversal. So this is quite a vocabulary intensive lesson. You may need to make flashcards, come up with mnemonic devices, but just try to figure out ways that can help you remember what's what coming up here. So the first the two things we need to know, types of angles, the first one's called adjacent. In adjacent angles, those are angles that are next to each other. So they share a common vertex and a side. So for example here, if I have angle 1 and angle 2, they have the same vertex down here, and they share this side. Okay. So they are adjacent. They're next to each other. Vertical angles, those are angles that are opposite each other when two lines cross, and they're congruent. So for example, in this case, we see angle 1 and angle 3. Those are vertical angles. They're opposite each other when these two lines cross. And congruent, that just means they're exactly the same size. A transversal, that's the line that crosses at least two other lines. So in this case, what I'm highlighting in green is the transversal. You might want to color that in your notes. Exterior angles are angles that are outside the parallel lines. So for example, a, B, G, and H, those are outside the parallel lines. Interior angles, on the other hand, those are inside the parallel lines, so C, D, E, and F. We're going to look at a few of these types and see if we can figure out a little bit more specific. A lot of times you're asked to name alternate interior angles. Alternate would mean one's on the left, one's on the right, but they're both inside. So for example, you could do C and F. They're alternate. They're kind of opposite each other, both inside, but one's on the left top, one's on the right bottom. C and F would be a pair of alternate interior angles. And I'm going to ask you to do more of these uh, naming. Alternate exterior. Again, this time we want them both to be on the outside, but as opposite of each other as you can be. So B and G would be a specific example of alternate exterior angles. Both on the outside, one on the top right, the other one on the bottom left, as opposite as you can get. Okay, the next type is same side interior. So this time you want it to be on the same side of the transversal, either left or right, and you want it to be inside the parallel lines. So for example, C and E are both interior and they're both on the left of the transversal. Okay, and then the last one of these same side exterior angles. So we want it to be on the outside but on the same side. So this time maybe B and H. They're both on the right. They're both on the outside. Okay, and I'm going to ask you to find extra types of all of these. Corresponding angles, those are angles that are in the same relative position. So if you look at these parallel lines, here's one, I'll make one red and one blue. For example, B and F, they are called corresponding angles because if you look at them on B compared to the red line, it's on the top right. F, compared to the bottom line, it's also on the top right. So if they're in the same relative position on their own line, we call that corresponding. Notice we have many other pairs of corresponding. I'll give you one of them. You could have done A and E. Those are both on the top left of their own line. So again, I want you to try to find a few more of these. Okay, for a little check to see how you're doing, I'm going to give you these examples. It would be great if you tried to answer all of these before you see my answers and then see how you did. So use the diagram to answer the questions. I want you to name two pairs of each of these. So vertical angles, start there. Vertical angles, they have to be when two lines cross opposite sides. So I'm going to look when these two lines cross. B and C is one pair of vert vertical angles. There's a lot of other choices. Maybe you did the bottom pair. E and H, that's a pair. Okay. If you put A and D or F and G, that's right too. Okay. 
Let me erase that. And let's look at supplementary angles. Supplementary, that wasn't in this vocab, but we've done it before. Those are adds up to 180. So you pick any angles that adds up to 180. It's easiest if you can kind of see they form a line. So for example, A and B form a line. So that's a good choice. You might notice F and H form a line, that diagonal line. Those are a good choice. Anything that would add up to 180 degrees, that's supplementary. Okay, the third type, alternate exterior angles. This time you only have two choices. So they have to be outside of the parallel lines on opposite sides. So A and H is one of your choices. You may have also found B and G. Okay. Same side interior angles. So this time inside on the same side. So C and E is one choice that you could have come up with. The other choice is D and F. Adjacent, there are a whole, whole lot of possibilities here. You're trying to find any two angles that are next to each other. So for instance, A and C, those are right next to each other. Uh, E and F, those are right next to each other. There's a lot of choices. B and D would work. D and C, A and B, etc., etc., etc. Okay, there's, if they aren't next to each other, though, they don't work. And then lastly, corresponding angles. So in the same relative position. So you may have picked, for example, A and E. You may have also picked B and F. So I'm going to work through all four just to make sure you've got it. A C and G would work. And then last but not least, you could say a D and H. All angles in the same relative position. Okay, the last thing you'll have to learn is a lot of times you're asked to identify angle measures. And given that angle B measures 110 degrees, what are the measures of the other seven angles in the diagram? Here's some interesting properties. So first thing I want to write 110 on B. One thing I want you to notice is that B and D make a straight line. So if 110 is B, D has to be 70 degrees because they add up to 180. Then you might notice that D and C also make a straight line. So 70 and 110 is 180. And then you might also notice C and A make a straight line. So 110 plus 70 is 180. Again, notice, just like I mentioned earlier, vertical angles are congruent. So that's 110, both of them. And these other ones are both 70. I don't think I mentioned it before, but it's also very important to note that if the lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are also congruent. So the angle that corresponds to A is E. That has to be 70 degrees. It's the same measurement. The angle that corresponds to C is G. That has to be 110 degrees. D corresponds to H. That's 70 degrees. And B corresponds to F. That's 110 degrees. You're going to notice in here there are only two different types of measurements, and there's four of each of them. And this kind of always works when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal. So we'll practice this more, and hopefully you get the hang of it. You're going to have to do something to help you memorize. Good luck.